What's up? Today I'm going to break down how I turn my hand-drawn art into vector repeating patterns using Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator. What makes repeating patterns so cool is that they go on literally everything. Once I unlocked the skill set of creating repeating patterns, it became a huge part of what I do, and honestly a staple income source for me. They're also probably my favorite thing to create. I could just spend hours arranging my illustrations into different layouts and colorways. It feels like a really fun puzzle. In this video, I'll be showing you the logistics for how to turn your art into a pattern that can repeat, but I'm also going to be walking you through my live thought process, showing you all the little decisions that I make and all the trial and error along the way. I'll be sharing my tips and tricks for making a good pattern that has a balanced composition and a natural flow. So whether you're an artist or designer looking to build more skills and offer pattern design as a service, or you're just looking to get creative and make some cool stuff, then this video is for you. All right, so the first step in creating a pattern design is to come up with some ideas and start sketching them out. Sometimes I've already got a strong idea in mind or I'm working off of a client prompt, but honestly, my favorite way to create a pattern is just to wing it. When I'm working on a pattern, I almost always end up somewhere that I didn't expect, which is a huge reason I love them so much. I think you can either cater your drawings to a type of pattern that you're looking to create, or you can just draw whatever you want and then make your pattern work to fit the art that you created. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I honestly just start doodling out a bunch of fun elements. Some will make the cut, others won't. But if you draw out a bunch of things that come to mind, you'll have plenty to work with when you start arranging everything. While I mostly wing it and just doodle my heart out, I do keep a few things in mind knowing that I'm going to be arranging these into a pattern. During the pattern process, I'm always thinking of shape, composition, direction, color, and contrast. While many of these things come into play once I'm actually laying out my pattern, I am going to be thinking about a few things while I'm drawing, specifically shape, color, and contrast. I like to make sure that I am drawing out a few elements in varying shapes, using a few different colors, and having a balance of dark and light. You'll see that I create a balance by having a few rigid shapes with hard edges and some more organic shapes. There will always be some elements that are more detailed and some that are more simple, and this is just going to help give us some variety when we go to arrange them into a balanced pattern. Okay, now that we have the line art for each of our drawings complete and separated onto their own layers, we are going to get cracking on color. Starting off with this hibiscus, I'm going to take its layer and set it as a reference, and this is going to allow me to fill in the colors on a separate layer. So on the layer below my line art for this hibiscus is where I'm going to start filling in the colors. I'm going to make sure that I select vector when it asks me how I want to fill. And I'm just going to start filling in all of the base colors for this flower. And I'll use a few different layers to add in colors for each of the elements just because I like to keep most of the colors as separated as I can. This makes it a lot easier to change colors later when you're in Adobe Illustrator and you're messing around with different colorways or just want to switch up the look of your pattern. Once I'm done adding color, I like to group together all the line art and color layers for this element. In Fresco, all you need to do is drag and drop the layers on top of one another in order to group them, and they'll still be separated, but they'll be in one layer group. I'm going to repeat this coloring and grouping process for all the rest of my elements before we get ready to take it into Adobe Illustrator. To export, you're just gonna go up to the top right corner, go to Publish and Export and then you're going to go to export as PSD. This is gonna keep all of your layers grouped and separated how you organized them. And then you're gonna export. I just like to airdrop to my computer and send it on over there. All right, so hopping over to Adobe Illustrator, all you need to do is open that PSD file and all of your artwork and layers will be intact. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna edit my artboard to be a square. So I like working on a 20 by 20 inch canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this background image that we have here. And then I'm just going to select everything and I'm going to shrink them a bit and move them off to the side so that we have a blank canvas to work from. Okay, as you can see, we have all of our layer groups. And if you want to be organized, you can go in and label these. I tend to work with a bit of chaos, so I leave them all labeled as layer group. <laughs> when I'm creating patterns, I like to make as many assets as I can from what I've already drawn. This is another reason I really love to keep all the color layers separated. I'll actually go in and duplicate some of the fill colors and line work and add them to their own new layer, creating another version of the element so that I can use it throughout the pattern. As you can see, I'm just duplicating layers to create new assets. I'm taking the fill color and the line art from the palm leaves, the plumeria, the monstera, 
the hibiscus flowers and the papaya and adding them to their own layers just in case I want to use them later. I am adding a white backdrop here quickly so that you can see them a little bit better. Pattern design is honestly a ton of trial and error. I spend quite a bit of time arranging all the elements, finding new layouts, and just trying to find the perfect composition and balance, and I find that having extra assets really helps. If there's a space that needs something to fill it, I'll grab one of the palm leaves, for example, that's just a single fill color, and I'll play around with low contrast colors or even opacity to fill some spaces without it feeling too busy. So while I sat down and drew 11 different illustrations, you can see how I can really quickly double those assets and create new things out of what I've already drawn. And you'll see me use these in action as we start putting this pattern together. Okay, so as you start moving your illustrations around, make sure you're selecting the entire layer group so that nothing gets left behind. If it's easier, you can select an asset and hit Command G or go to Object, group to make one solid group. All you have to do is then click and drag, but I like to keep my layers separated throughout the process to make it easier to change colors later if I need to. So I just go to my layers panel and then make sure I'm selecting the entire layer group before moving it around. As I'm laying out these elements, I am not attached to anything and there is no pressure. I know that many of these things are going to move and shift around and I'm really just vibing it out getting a feel for what might look nice together and seeing how I can balance the colors that I'm working with. As far as my thought process goes, I like to work around the biggest element. So I made this skull dude with a banana tree growing out of his head as the center and I'm just building around that. If you find that you have a hard time getting started, I recommend just picking which element you want in the center and then working from there. Another thing I do to help me get started and lay down a foundation is seeing if I have any elements that are the same color or similar in color. I have two different hibiscus flowers that are both pink, so I know that I needed to keep those farther from one another or in opposite corners. What we are trying to do when we create a pattern is create a single tile that can be repeated over and over again so that the pattern can go on forever without any weird gaps. In order to do this, we need the left side of the tile to match the right. It's really important to spread our elements evenly across our tile, including the edges. If we don't add any things hanging off the edge, when we go to repeat the pattern, there'll be a pretty obvious empty space there. If you add an element on the left that's cut off, the same element needs to appear on the right side of the canvas in the exact same spot. That way, when they repeat, they fit together perfectly like a puzzle. This same concept applies to the top and bottom of the canvas as well. So what you're gonna do is select the element that's on the edge, go to your layers panel and select duplicate layer or duplicate layer group if it's a group of layers. You want to duplicate instead of using copy and paste to ensure you're starting from the exact same spot on your canvas. You'll then select your duplicate element, go to properties and adjust the X or Y axis location. Because I need to move this along the X axis and given that my canvas is 20 by 20 inches, I'm going to go up here to the X and just add plus 20 to move it 20 inches to the right. Don't forget the X is left to right and Y is up and down. This is another reason why I like to work in inches. It's a lot easier to work with more simple numbers. You'll inevitably have to do this multiple times as you shift things around and test out different layouts. And there are so many ways to create patterns. I know for a fact that other artists probably do this a lot different than I do, but this is just my process and what I've been doing for a really long time. Adobe Illustrator does have a make pattern tool, but I personally find it difficult to format it how I want to, Instead, I use that tool to get a preview of what my pattern is looking like, which I will show soon. After creating so many patterns, I've got a feel for what works and what doesn't, and I am much faster at it now than I used to be. I can start to envision what a pattern is going to look like before seeing it repeated, but once I actually repeat the pattern and preview what it's going to look like, there are always adjustments that need to be made. I decided to add some fun text into this one as I just felt like the pattern could probably use another object that's a bit more of a rigid shape, so I'm throwing this Aloha in in a custom font that I created and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I am feeling like we are at a good place to stop and check out what this looks like repeated so we can start making some adjustments. I'm going to create a new layer and move it to the top of all of my layers and then I'm just going to create a box that's the exact same size as my canvas and make sure it's perfectly centered. Then I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. This is going to crop all of the artwork to make it perfectly square, which we need in order to start making it into a pattern. 
I'm going to copy the clipping mask and paste it and make it a bit smaller so that we can view the pattern a bit more scaled out. With our new clipping mask selected, go to Object, Pattern, Make. And then you're going to check the box that says Size, Tile to Art. And then you'll select Done. This pattern will now appear in your swatch library. So with that swatch selected, you can go ahead and create any shape and your pattern should fill the inside. Okay, so right off the bat, I noticed there's a couple things along the edges that I forgot to duplicate to the other side. I almost always forget something, which is why I do multiple checks. So I'm gonna go back in and make those adjustments really quick. Okay, so right off the bat, this pattern is actually already looking pretty cool and fairly complete, but there are a few changes that I need to make. Because the bottom of the surf fin is perfectly straight and it's kind of in line with the monsteras and a few other elements, it creates this visual harsh line throughout the whole pattern. So I'm gonna turn that fin, I think, and move it down a little bit. And that should fix that harsh visual line I'm seeing throughout the pattern which isn't necessarily a bad look. I think some people could try to go for that, but it's just not the look that I'm going for for this pattern as I want it to feel a little bit more organic. Now I'm just going in and shifting things around slightly, and I'm also going to explore some new coloring options now that I'm mostly happy with the overall layout. I'll also mention that I almost always add in a bit of a low contrast background pattern as well once I feel good about my overall color choices and what I call my foreground pattern, so stay tuned for that. As I'm making some color swaps, you'll see how valuable it is that I had most of the colors all separated by layer. It makes it super easy to select everything in one layer and then just change the color that way. If you end up wanting to change out an entire color you've used across your design, for example, let's say I wanted to swap out that cream color that's on my skull, but also on the florals and the coconut, I would just select one thing that's that color and then go to select, same, fill color and then change everything in that color to another color. Okay, so I feel pretty content with these colors, so we're gonna go ahead and create another clipping mask and see how this looks in a repeating pattern. I'm actually gonna open a new document to check the pattern, which is what I almost always normally do. I like doing it this way because as I'm working on my file and making tweaks, I can look back at the last pattern preview in the other tab just to remember what changes that I wanted to make. This also allows me to keep all my pattern swatches to see how it has evolved. Okay, this is looking pretty dang good so far in my opinion. The only thing I'm noticing is that these hibiscus flowers right here need to be moved slightly to the right as they're looking a little bit crowded towards the left. Alright, so I'm just making that quick adjustment and pushing those flowers slightly to the right and then I'm going to jump into my background pattern, which is totally optional, but I think it adds so much depth and just brings a lot of softness to the pattern. Basically, I'm taking some of the extra assets that I created at the beginning and arranging them into a very simple pattern just above the background color and below all of the other elements. I'm using the line art from one of my palm leaf designs and the fill color from another. I like to keep these pretty low contrast, not to distract too much from our main pattern elements. I use a slightly darker or slightly lighter color than the background, and I start to incorporate some other colors that you see from the pattern as well. And I'll even play with opacity, so I'll make some of them transparent so that you can see how they overlap one another, bringing in even more color values. And you treat this background pattern just like you did everything else, where we make sure that the left is the same as the right and the top is the same as the bottom, that way everything is repeatable. And now I'm going to add in my artist name and find a place where it fits well and looks natural within the pattern. Alright, we are ready to check out how this is looking and I think we are getting super close. This is looking really good. The only thing I'm noticing is now that we have the background pattern colors, the color of this papaya is pretty drowned out and it's hard to tell what it is. And then also this palm leaf down here is too close in color to what's behind it, so we just need to make some quick color swaps. So I went ahead and made that palm leaf in the bottom corner the darkest color that you see in the pattern. And I ended up playing around with the color of the papaya a ton, but I landed on the light blue that's throughout the pattern and I think that's perfect. And here is the final product. I think this turned out pretty cool and would look awesome on any sort of beach or adventure gear, really. I'm not totally sure what to name this print, so if you have any fun suggestions for me, make sure to leave them in the comments. And uh, here are some mock-ups just to really bring it to life and imagine what it could look like on your favorite everyday items. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe. I'm loving where this channel is going so far and I'm looking forward to more growth and making every video hopefully better than the one before. So thanks for all of your support. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.